Hey folks, welcome to Let's Talk Chiropractic. This is Dr. John, Dr. Alex, and this is Kim Gerhard. Thanks for coming, Kim. Hi. I know you're such a, you were telling us before how busy you are renovating your whole house. Yeah. And you're very busy at your job, but give everybody a little introduction. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Kim Gerhard. I'm the Associate Director for Procurement of Chewy. Um, very busy. Uh, I have a husband and three kids and a variety of different animals. Well, with Chewy, no she gets a discount and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But thank you. When you first came to me, you had a terrible neck pain. Mm -hmm. Remember, you didn't weren't really sure like what's causing my headaches. And the mm -hmm. doctor, the, the doctor, she, did she send you over here then, Doctor Amelia? Yeah. I've been dealing with headaches and migraines for over a year and a half now. And about six months ago, she said that um, she suggested I see a chiropractor because I was complaining about pain. And uh, that's when I came here. Great. Well, let's talk about the what we did and what made you come here and stuff like that. Okay. So, folks, go get a big pizza, a big glass of ice water, and come back and watch the show. We'll be waiting for you. Welcome back to Let's Talk Chiropractic. Again, I'm Dr. John and this is Kim. Kim, this show is about you. I really believe if I get on this show, Alex, and I tell people we want to really help their headaches, people think we're just trying to drum up our business. But when Kim tells her story, people will connect. Hopefully there's people at home watching around and says, Mom, listen to this lady's story. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So in the past, you were getting headaches, mm -hmm. went to Dr. Amelia, mm -hmm. She gave you blood pressure medication, which brought down the blood pressure, but really <laughs> didn't help your headaches. Yeah. What made you eventually choose this office as a chiropractic office? Um, she, re she referred me to a chiropractor. She didn't really give me a name. Um, and then I called around and asked, you know, what everybody thought would be a good choice because I was unfamiliar with people in the area. Um, and then my daughter drove me here, and the pain was probably at its worst, which is how I ended up here. So I couldn't, I really could not tolerate the pain any longer. Do you remember that first visit when you came? Mm -hmm. You were in severe pain, and mm -hmm. I could see it in your eyes, Alex. She was a little bit of a fear factor that was like, what's this all about? So I always try to tra train him and I, we have to be like detectives. Listen to the patient's story. So when we first started talking about it, you had a car accident. Yes. What, 19 years ago? Mm -hmm. A little more than that. I was 19. So tell people about that car accident. I was T-boned um, by a, another car. It hit me, spun me around, and I went into a phone pole. So I had whiplash and um, I, evidently neck damage. Did you see chiropractic care then? I did um, for a short period of time. And then after about a month of treatment, I was, you know, I'm 19. What do I know? And I, was, I felt a little better and I was like, oh, you know, I'm fine. And I just went about my life and never went back. My prayer is that he and I are to investigate to figure out, I always want the patient, Alex, you know, because we get young people in car accidents and same thing. Mm -hmm. They're 19 and they just want one little crack and then they're gone. So it's our goal to say to them, let's take an x-ray, let's correct this totally so it doesn't cause troubles down the road. Do you have trouble with 19-year-old car accident patients still staying in their care? Sometimes I have trouble with 50-year-old car accident patients, to be <laughs> honest. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very natural for someone who, you know, they get the adjustment, they get that, that endorphin spike, the pain relieves a little bit. They think, wow, I'm on the right track, I'm out. I can't remember. Did you sleep on your stomach all mm. your life? Mm, yeah. Yeah, except for when I was pregnant. But yeah, okay. I've always slept on my stomach. So we, we educated you to understand as you sleep <clears throat> on your stomach, you have to twist your neck to breathe. Mm -hmm. And it was that daily, nightly ritual that strained the neck, that then aggravated by the accident, mm -hmm. that eventually brought you to the office. So have you found it hard not to sleep on your stomach? No. Um, the first few nights was kind of hard, but um, my husband bought me a pillow to go around my neck like the kind you use on an airplane. Yeah, good. And I started sleeping on that, and it forced me to stay on my back. So tell people, what, did, what was it like when you used to get these bad headaches? Um, on a mild day, it just felt like, like a pounding or a pulsing in my head. On the days where it got really bad, I had tunnel vision and couldn't really see in the peripheral. And just the rustling of paper would, would sound like a train was just driving right through my head. Um, and it just got to a point where I couldn't see straight. So because I couldn't see straight, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to drive. I wasn't able to, you know, really function too well. And I was sitting a lot and it wasn't getting any better because I would lay down and then I would not be comfortable. So it was just kind of a vicious cycle. But the headaches were just something that I, I've never experienced pain like that in my life. You know, prior to the show, I was so impressed just listening to you, how she does drywall and 
<laughs> plumbing and all this kind of stuff. So for her to have a headache and, and, and not be productive, not being able to do her, she makes a list on her phone. This is your week off. <laughs> and you made a list on your phone of renovating a day each day at the Every house. Every day. So, a list. But to me, for that productivity to be stopped because of a headache, it must have been frustrating for you. Yeah, it's very frustrating because I don't know how to sit still. <laughs> okay. So folks, here's Kim's story. Terrible headache, she was a stomach sleeper. So we remind everybody, stop sleeping on your stomach. Um, after you're halfway done with that pizza, go wash your hands, come back in about two minutes, okay? Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Chiropractic. And I'm Dr. John, Dr. Alice, this is Kim Gerhardt. You're telling your story, girl. Something. But let's go back in time. When Dr. Amelia said to you, go see a chiropractor, mm -hmm. and you decided to come to our office, mm -hmm. and we met each other for the first time, and you told me your story. John, I stepped on my stomach. I've been twisting my neck. I had this car accident when I was 19. I said, Kim, I want to very gently, I want to get the neck and get a little click. You could feel it, though. There's a little nervousness by the patient so the doctor feels that and says okay let's not be too rough because on Hulu there's these videos of these chiropractors that literally they they twist it then they get a rope and the rope they they yank the person's neck no wonder people are afraid to see chiropractors so how did you feel that first visit to this office um I think I was more nervous because I was worried about what was going to be found I didn't think it was going to be I mean, it's not simple, but I didn't think it was going to be as simple as like adjusting my neck and feeling better. I thought it was going to be something severe because I've never felt pain like that before. So I thought it was going to be something more severe, but it wasn't, um, I don't think it was fear. I think it was just kind of not knowing, like going into an unknown situation. That was, that was, I think the weirdest thing is you're just kind of laying on that table and somebody's twisting your head a certain direction. You're kind of like, is your head going to pop off? But it wasn't like that at all. So first, I guess that it was a relief to find it's not a brain tumor, mm -hmm. nothing, you know, terminal. Yeah, because yeah. that's what I thought. I thought there was seriously something wrong. So when I said to you, remember, lay your head in my hands. Mm -hmm. We want to get that little twist. There were women to this day watching the show. They'll say, John, I trust you, but some chiropractor in Jersey 10 years ago was so rough, he traumatized me. It takes me multiple visits to get them to say, I'm not going to be as rough as that guy. How were you when we first twisted? You were able to, to let go and get adjusted? It was probably the strangest feeling I've ever felt because as soon as, as soon as you adjusted my neck and it cracked, you could feel like you could feel like the release of tension. Like it didn't feel as stiff or as um, rigid as it was before. I mean, because just to drive down the road, I was having a hard time looking left to like look into my blind spot to merge into a different lane. And I didn't have that. And it was almost immediate. Dr. Alex, you've been here now almost the whole year, right? Mm -hmm. How about you? I feel even as a chiropractor, you have to feel every patient. Mm -hmm. So uh, the more experience you're getting, are you getting to know which patients I can adjust a little bit more and a little, some a little bit less, so like, yeah. how's it coming along for you? And it's hard to describe why you know that, right? You just kind of feel it and it kind of talks to you. That's what I always say, your neck's talking to me, it's telling me a story. Uh, but I, I totally understand that, you know, the whole apprehension. And I, I reassure people, I go, hey, I didn't figure it out until I was in chiropractic school, how to relax my neck and let people adjust me. There's something about someone having their hands on your neck, you know, it's hard to go, all right, let this guy try and fix me. But when they finally do, right, that's when you get the, the sound of the, the choir in heaven singing, the adjustment goes, everything's cleared out, and you can turn your head, and their face is like, wow, mm -hmm. I can't believe it, right? Mm -hmm. Can't yeah. believe it. I didn't realize how bad it was until I was actually able to turn my head completely. I didn't realize how, how limited the movement was, like the range of motion in my neck. I didn't realize how bad it was. We wanted to see how much it was out of place. Remember we took an x-ray that day? Mm. What do you remember about that x-ray? Do you remember much about it? Um, the x-ray was actually the simplest part. Um, but the x-ray, when you showed me on the chart, um, there's the four stages of spinal decay. And then you showed me mine was a three. Um, that, was, that was a little eye-opening and that was a little scary because... At that point, I, you know, this whole time I was thinking, you know, oh, is this just an old age thing? And you said, no, this isn't an old age thing. This is an old injury thing. Um, 
so that was kind of intimidating. Um, but it's, it's not, it's not now, now that I know, like it's never going to be a hundred percent, but it can improve. That's you know, okay. A lot, of, a lot of neurologists, they will order CAT scans of the head. They find the head is normal, no tumors. So when I then find out that it's the neck, give a, a quick explanation, Dr. Alex. People watching the show, they're going to say, I went to my doctor, he did all these CAT scans of my head, find nothing wrong with me. Now this show is saying your headaches could be from your neck. Give a little anatomy. If her neck misaligns, why does it cause headaches? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The common one, let's say it's a migraine, okay? Uh, I like to describe migraines from, there's several theories that describe it. And all of them do a good job, but not the perfect job. My favorite of the good job ones is called metabolic theory. There's only so much energy, chemical energy, but we'll just use energy, in the brain and spine. They share energy. The rest of the body is kind of outside of a layer. There's an envelope between them, so they, it's harder to share energy there. But that brain and spine, they share energy. When that energy is used up, your body has to stop you. It has to say, quit it. You stop using energy. Big things that take energy is sensation. What am I feeling? What am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I thinking? Those things, they spend a lot of energy. This top part of the neck, these muscles here, there's four on either side. They are a hundred times bigger energy spenders than any other part. Because they, they have so many different jobs. They wear in a lot of different hats. They work hard, kind of like you. So they're not only telling you where your head is, they orient you automatically with the horizon. They also try to fix your spine for you. They're trying to do the job. And if they can't, they'll pull tighter and tighter and tighter. And it's a big sensation in the brain, and the brain just chucks it out. It's junk. It's garbage. Wasted energy. So now you're depleted. So your brain starts threatening you. It, your body does. It says, I'm going to give you this terrible headache until you quit using energy. I'm going to make you nauseous. I'm going to make you tunnel vision. I'm going to make you pass out. Stop using energy. Go to sleep because it doesn't realize it's just throwing energy out. It's, it's, it, it's, that's its job. It goes, I need more energy. Go to sleep. And it's talking to you. Now that's for your migraines, right? So I, we see that all the time with the very top. Sometimes you get these headaches, though, where it's not as obvious as that. It's not as clear. They refer these joints that line up in the back of the spine. They throw pain other places than the neck. So people will say things like, yeah, my neck hurts, but it also hurts right here or something like that. Really common when you have either the muscle getting so tight trying to fix that neck for us, your body tries to take care of you. It really does. But it just can't. So it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. You get these trigger points. They shoot pain up. Even the actual joints they shoot pain somewhere else. It has to do with how you developed when you were a little, little baby. These nerves were traveling along a path, and just because of that, they remember where they were, and they shoot pain in other places. But yeah, so it's, it's complicated and evolved. But I think the easiest way to think about it for the migraines, those, this is the headache I can't drive. And usually, you know, you, you, maybe you can't turn your head even if it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. That is usually an energy issue. And your body's trying to do right by you. By getting you to quit everything and go to sleep, drop everything, you know, it, we are an energy emergency, but uh, without fixing the energy waster, it'll never go away, right? It'll just keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the big issue. Not to scare you. I, I've seen some girls like you, Kim, the first visit is so aggressive, they don't want to go back to those chiropractors. So then they come, they know this office is more gentle. And they'll tell me, the guy across town, he did this. And I said, well, we're not going to do that. But as you slowly get to build a relationship together, then I said, now let me do a little bit more than I, I've been doing. We want to show in another minute for now what an adjustment is like. I want people to see, what I say, what our high-low is like. A table goes up and down. Some chiros, they don't have a high-low. They just have a flat table. We're going to measure your leg length. We're going to adjust you. And then remember, you get a, sh a massage for doing this show. We should have the TV cameras come to while you're getting a massage. Oh, no, we'll pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I could, you're off today. She took a shower. She got beautiful makeup on to come to a show. So the least we do is give a little bit of a gift. So you ready to get an adjustment? Sure. Okay. So folks, you heard Kim's story. Her own doctor said, go see a chiropractor. We've been gentle. She's doing much better. The beautiful energy she has, Alex, we are allowed. Her husband, if he was sitting here, remember you said, he thinks she's too energetic. So now without headaches, all that energy she has, she can be all of productivity. It's a beautiful story to hear. It's a terrible thing when a woman says, I want to get all of these rooms done, but I can't because I have a massive migraine. 
So I pray can people watching the show should say, life is short. Yeah. Every day that they cannot be productive because of a headache. You can't just take pills and be like a zombie, okay? Okay, folks, let's go down the hall. We're going to see what the adjustment is like, and that's where the magic all occurs, in my opinion. So stay tuned. Hey, guys. This is the place I've spent 50, 60, sometimes 70 hours a week for 41 years. It is a joy to become an artist in adjusting, reading the little subtleties of every patient. You said before, when you are interviewing people, you look at little things when you hire new people. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing, Kim. Is this girl, is there a nervous twitch in her face? Is she, I get these little subtle, and that's why I always tell Dr. Alex, just be like a detective. All these non-verbal communications that says to us, the patient's nervous, be extra gentle, get them to trust you, then we can change their life, okay? So everybody's gonna watch what an adjustment is like. This is called a high-low table. My eight-year-old patients, Kim, they love these tables. They're more expensive, but rather than just crawling on a table and crawling off, you know, if someone, Kim, has terrible pain, they, they love that this table takes them down and brings them up. So you take a little nap, okay? Then you can go home and finish your bathroom. Mm. She even put tile in her shower. I'm impressed. I thought you just put up a tile board or something. No. So, folks, there's a right and a left sacroiliac joint. Many people watching this show, even though we talked about headaches mainly for Kim, if they have lower back pain, it's from the back being out of alignment, which means one of the sacroiliac joints goes up while the other one goes down. So we measure the leg length. Anybody that has back pain, believe me, one of your legs is going to be shorter. So you're seeing physical therapy, taking medications. It's not going to help it unless the back is adjusted. So let's do what we call a, a leg. They call it either a Deerfield test or a Kemp test. We've won, and sure enough, Kim's right leg, if I do it properly. So it's a little bit shorter, Alex, see it? Yeah. So I always say, first make that decision, right leg short. Let's see what it does. It ends just a little longer, see it? So maybe from knocking out her bathroom walls, her right side is off. <laughs> so we're gonna adjust. Again, we use a tension table. We, we bring this up. We're going to just tighten it up a little bit here. Because ideally, Alex, when I get busy, sometimes I even just adjust with one hand. But <laughs> Dr. Thompson always, I always feel, go with the, with the, you know, those guys had decades of, of thousands of patients where they did different types of adjustments. So just follow the, the, the masters. We get on our right sacroiliac. We push it this way. And with my right hand, there's a called an ischium right here. So no pain. Sometimes when patients come, they jump because it's a loud sound. <laughs> and I always tell the patient, tell him, no, 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 no dwelling, no pain. But three taps is what Thompson always said. So even in everything, actually, when I bend my knees, I have my back straight, my, my elbows, my shoulders, everything feels good after doing this for So my prayers, I never want to retire, but with your blessing, I want to cut back my hours, yet still be here to be your buddy. <laughs> so one more that. time. No, I do. I, I'm like Kim to some degree. I, I love being productive and being busy. So they look level. And then we always been up again, past 90 degrees, they look good. So her right side was off, so I'm glad we're doing this tonight, Kim. So tonight we would advise put 20 minutes of ice right there. Now you're going to get this nice back of yours massaged, right, huh? <laughs> Would you have a gentle one or a medium one on your last massage? Uh, medium. Yeah, because we have a gentle girl, a medium girl, and a deeper girl. And they all work full time. They've been here for 20, 30 years. Take a deep breath for me. And exhale. Even if this doesn't move, Alex, I never force a thoracic spine. I push gently. To me, if you mainly correct the bottom and we correct the top, the middle usually corrects itself. Unless the guy has like a rib problem, then I do a little bit more. But overall, I never push too hard in the middle. Okay, let's do the, the magical part. I want you to roll around and lay on your back. But Kim, this is pretty much what we do all the time when you come mm -hmm. here, right? It's my favorite time. Well, if you ever have an employee who says, I'm not productive because of a headache, you better say, go to my crazy chiropractor, okay? <laughs> okay. So Alex, we took an x-ray. Remember, you showed her the x-ray. We, we showed her this. Let's talk about that for a second. This is a normal x-ray of a neck. So we wanted Kim to have some understanding as to what we're doing. If there is a normal curve to the neck, there are spaces between the vertebrae. S people who sleep on their stomachs, they get phase one, 
where the spine gets very straight. Eventually, when she started sleeping in her stomach, having a car accident, the disc spaces start to get too thin. That's where she is. She was between phase two and phase, phase three is when the discs almost become thinner with arthritic spurs. She's not quite at that point yet. So when you get the patient, Alex, to understand that. That's why I say, oh, we're teachers more than anything. Get Kim to understand that her neck in two, three visits, though she felt better, we want to now get back her curve. So we're always asking her to try to, you know, maybe elevate the computers, lower the chair so she has better posture. Because it's going to take months to years to slowly get the neck as perfect as we want it to be. So the adjustment is simple. Yeah, this is the right side that's always tight. And you're trying not to stretch your neck at all, right? Mm -mm. Okay. So again, Alex, you go nice and slow. I try to use the tip of my finger, just a little. Nothing on that side. So again, the left side is what I would call her better side. And we did this, was it two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, you forget about this camera. Good, just a little. That's all we'll do. So the patient feels like a little click. But I want people watching to realize that wasn't bad though, Kim, was it? Because <laughs> I think a lot of people, when they see that, you know, we do not do this to 80-year-old patients. We use a drop headpiece for people like that. But that little click, Alex, so then her ligaments, her tendons, so we always educate people. The more Kim keeps her chin up, it's going to help her curve to come back. So if she could ever sleep on her back with like a towel under her neck, when I come home today after a busy day, I'll, I'll lean back. I'll probably roll up a towel and lean back in my recliner. Anything to keep that good neck in our spine. How's your posture been? Do you think it worked? Do you look at computers much? All day, every day. Do you try to lower the chair? Raise the I screen? I raise the monitors. Okay, good. Because a lot, a lot <laughs> of people, like, say they're not aware of it. They'll say, well, geez, I look at yeah. these computers all day. But if you can lower that chair and raise the screen, that helps their chin to come up then. Okay, young lady. So let's, we, like you just said, we corrected what we call a subluxation, which is a misaligned vertebrae. We're letting the, the energy that God gave her brain to get more balanced. And this body knows how to heal itself. You and I were mechanics. We get the bone off the nerve, and the body just starts to heal itself better. Okay. You good? Up we go. So, folks, nothing too fancy. I, I mean, I think chiropractic is simple. So if you have bad migraines, and if you've never decided about chiropractic care, don't listen to me. Listen to Kim's story. Thanks for watching. Dr. Alex does the next show tonight, so... Stay tuned next week to see his show, okay?